RDS maintenance and upgrades. Maintenance or upgrades happen at both database engine and in DB instances operating system level. This is because both the database engine and instance OS need to be patched and upgraded. We have automatic and manual maintenance. We have also something called maintenance windows, wherein we mention that all the maintenance or patches has to be applied during a scheduled time period. For multi-easy deployments, maintenance will not cost any downtime at all. These are the steps. First, RDS would perform the maintenance at standby. It will promote the standby to primary. Then it will perform maintenance at old primary, which is the new standby. Here we have our primary and standby instance. RDS upgrades the standby instance first, then makes it primary. Old primary instance will become new standby. Upgrade is performed here. As it has already become secondary, replication flow would be changed by RDS. We have upgrades available for database instances operating system, which are released by AWS on a timely basis. Then we have database engine upgrades. There are two types of upgrades, major and minor. In minor upgrade, patching, fix packs, etc. are applied. Minor upgrades are always backward compatible, but major upgrades are nothing but version upgrades which are not backward compatible. We have already seen backup in EBS DynamoDB. It is no exception in RDS also. RDS provides backup and restore functionalities as well. Backups are storage volume snapshots and they are not taken at individual database level. When you take a backup, entire DB instance would be backed up. If you are planning to take individual database backups, then that is not possible from RDS. If supported, you can use individual database engines clients to take backups of databases. There are two types of backups available in RDS, backup and snapshot. Backup is done automatically and snapshots are backups which are taken manually. To take automated backups, we have to define a backup window when RDS can take automated backups of RDS instances. For multi-easy deployments, RDS always takes backup from standby instances. It does not touch primary instance at all. Because in multi-easy deployment, we have synchronous replication. Data in standby instances are always in sync with primary DB instance. Then we can take backup using manual DB snapshots. Snapshots are actually manual database backups. When an RDS instance is dropped, all automated backups are deleted as well. But snapshots have to be deleted manually. Point in time restores are only possible using automated backups within the backup retention period defined. This line represents database operations for the last 15 days. Backup retention period has been defined as 7 days and backups are taken on a daily basis at 12 am midnight. Suppose you came to know the three days back something went wrong at 1 pm in the afternoon and to get back consistency a restore has to be done till 12 30 pm using backups we can restore to the previous days point which is 12 am midnight but using point in time restore restoration is possible till a time which extends the backup end timings in rds this is only possible if you enable automated backups if the corruption had happened at this time, which is say 10 days back and we want to do a restore till this point, it would not be possible as backup retention period is only 7 days. Restore cannot be done to an existing DB instance. While doing restore, you have to restore it to a new database instance. Suppose you have a database in an AZ in this region and want to restore this database to another AZ. We can take a snapshot of this database, which can be used to restore to a different AZ. Using the same snapshot, we can restore this database to a different region also. Snapshot can be copied over to another region and the database can be restored from there. Let's see a demo now. We'll take a manual backup or DB snapshot of the instance which we created in the previous demo. We'll see backup window and retention period. We'll set up automatic backup as well. We'll use this manual snapshot to restore DB instance in the same region and in a different region. We'll see how different storage options can be used while doing the restore. 
I'll also show you how to share a snapshot with different AWS accounts. I'm using the same RDS database instance from the previous demo, which is MySQL RDS DB instance. If you see the details, automated backups are mentioned as disabled. So is the backup window. While creating this RDS database instance, we did not enable automated backups. That's why we did not mention the backup window. So let us go ahead and enable automated backups for this RDS database instance. Click on instance actions and then modify. In the instance specification page, scroll down and go to backup. Change the backup retention period to any non-zero numbers. It can be anything from one day to 35 days. I'll select two days and then you can choose a backup window. The backup retention period is two days and the backup window is 2359. This is nothing but 12 a.m. and the duration is 0.5 hours. You might ask what happens if the backup runs beyond 30 minutes. The purpose of this duration is that when this backup runs, RDS will put all its resources in the backup process. But if it extends beyond the specified duration, then the resources would be taken away and would be used in other operations which are being performed by this database instance. But the backup will not be terminated. Click on continue and then you can mention whether to apply the modifications during the maintenance window or you want to apply it immediately. We have already mentioned a maintenance window. We we'll select apply immediately and then click on modify DB instance. The instance has again gone to modifying status because the backup window is being applied to this RDS DB instance. It will again take some time for the instance to become available. After that, I'll show you how to take manual backups or database snapshots of a particular DB instance. And we'll use that snapshot to restore to a different DB instance in the same region. To take snapshot of an instance, select the instance and then click on EC2 instances and then take snapshot. Mention a snapshot name, click on take snapshot. It will take some time for the snapshot to get completed. The process will start though. So once completed, you will find the snapshot in the snapshot tab. You can perform multiple actions on this. Select the snapshot and then click on actions. You can copy this to a different region. You can mention the region name here. Currently we are in US East 1 or North Virginia region. You can copy it to a different region altogether with a new snapshot identifier or a new snapshot name. You can enable encryption while copying the snapshot. That means the current DB snapshot is not encrypted. When you copy it over to the new re region, the snapshot would be an encrypted one. And whatever DB instances you restore from that snapshot, that DB instance would be encrypted. You can use the default RDS CMK or you can use our KMS CMK. Click on copy snapshot and then the snapshot will be copied to the other region. The other action is to share snapshot. There are two options, private and public. If you mention private, you have to give an AWS account ID. Only that account ID will have access to copy this snapshot or use this snapshot for the matter. If you click public, then this snapshot would be available to all AWS users. Remember, this is not general public. It will only be available to all AWS users or AWS account holders. The op other option is to delete the snapshot. And then finally, you can restore this snapshot to a new database instance. You can provide the instance specifications as we did while launching a new DB instance. You can mention a different instance class altogether. You can choose to have the restore DB instance as a multi ez deployment. You can change the storage type as well. In the settings, the snapshot ID has already been taken and then you have to mention the instance identifier. I'll give the instance identifier as this name, AWS Foundation MySQL Restored Instance. You can choose to restore the DB instance in a different VPC also. We'll select our own VPC. You can choose a different subnet group as well. You can make it publicly accessible or not. Again, if the subnet group has only private subnets, then you cannot make it publicly accessible. You can make your preference on AZ. If it is a multi-AZ deployment, then you cannot do so. Finally, in database options, you can choose the database port, the option groups, 
the tags, IAM authentication. You can mention the log exports. You can check slow query log, which would be sent to CloudWatch logs. And then finally the maintenance. If you see everything is exactly similar as we did while launching a new database instance. Click on restore DB instance and the restoration will start. It will take a lot of time for the restoration to get completed. Once it is done, click on instances and then we'll see the status is available. This is the restore database instance. If you select in the details pane, you'll see all the options which you have mentioned while restoring the database instance. That is how database backup and restore work. That's all for RDS part one. Thanks for watching.